sunshine on a cloudy day. When it's cold outside, I've got the month of May. I guess you'd say, what can make me feel this way? My God, my God, my God, talking about my God, my God, I've got so much love from God in my life. I've got a heart full of joy. Because of his love. Well, I guess you'd say, What can make me feel this way? Who is it? My God, my God, my God. Talking about my God, my God. I don't crave money, fortune, or fame. I've got so many blessings in Jesus' name. Let's sing. Well, I guess you'd say, what can make me feel this way? My God, my God, my God, talking about my God, my God. Good morning. Morning. If I if I play that again, will you all sing? <laughs> or clap? Will you all oh, sing? Yeah. Good morning. Some. Let's try it again. Oh, we're doing it again. Yep. Such on, on a, a cloudy day. day. When it's cold outside. When, when it's, it's cold, cold outside. outside. I've, I've got, got the month of May. May. I guess you'd say, what can make me feel this way? Who is it? My God, my God, my God, talking about my God, my God. I've got so much love from God above. I've got a heart full of joy. Because of his love. Well, I guess you'd say, What can make me feel this way? My God, my God, my God, talking about my God, my God. I don't crave no money, fortune, or fame. I got so many blessings in Jesus' name. I'd like to hear everybody. Well, I guess you say, what can make me feel this way? My God, my God, my God, talking about my God, my God. Good morning. That's going to be a hard act to follow. <laughs> really, that was great, wasn't it? Um, well, as you know, today's Palm Sunday, and I hope everyone got a palm. If not, raise your hand if you need a palm, and Debbie will bring you one. Okay, everyone's got one. And today is also the last day to order Easter flowers, and the forms are on the back table. Um, the holy schedule is listed in the bulletin. Uh, Bible study will end this coming week and will uh, resume after Easter. There are some make and take projects on the back table in the narthex. Grab one for your kids, your grandkids, your neighbors, whoever. Um, there's a basket in the Gabe Center for food, for the food pantry, and items needed is, uh, are listed on the bulletin board out there. And that's now a community bulletin board. 
If you need to post anything, feel free to post. And don't forget to join us after service for breakfast. There's lots of food, and no one can get out without eating. So, <laughs> and oh, um, this month or this coming week, there's four very important people that are having birthdays. And I was warned not to say their name, but they're very special people. So just keep them in your prayers. I'll tell you when you're eating whose birthday it is. Maybe, maybe then we could sing happy birthday to them. You know who you are. That's all I got. Well, good morning. Well, that was quite a musical introduction. Um, I'm afraid that uh, you're replacing Dr. Doo-Wop in me now. <laughs> would you take, yeah, would you take Linda with you? <laughs> no, we, um, thank you very much. That, that was wonderful. Well, welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here this morning. You know, this is the beginning of Holy Week. The beginning of that time when we are going to really be in the midst of God's grace. And so today we're going to talk about grace. We're going to talk about grace, though, in a very, very different way. You know, we always give the same Palm Sunday sermon each and every year. In fact, some of you probably knew exactly what I was going to talk about today because I have not changed the Palm Sunday sermon since I started at this church eight years ago. But I'm going to surprise you today. I actually have a brand new sermon, okay, that uh, you're going to want to stay for this one, let me tell you. No, I have a brand new sermon that I actually did not steal from anyone, but I thought that for so many years we have ignored the idea of God's grace. For so many years we've ignored the idea of God's grace as we celebrate during Holy Week. We celebrate on Easter morning. It's all about God's grace. So as we prepare to enter this week, let us really think about what God's grace means in each one of our lives, how it literally has transformed and changed each one of our lives. Now, just a couple notes about the Holy Week schedule. We will be celebrating with our brothers and sisters at Salem United Methodist Church and Hebron United Methodist Church uh, Monday, Thursday, that's at 7 o'clock at Salem. Now, on Friday there will be a very special Good Friday service here. I'll tell you in advance, it is going to be a very different service. It is probably not a service appropriate for younger people, for children. Uh, it walks us right into the passion. It walks us right into the face of evil. We will then have a traditional Good Friday service that will be 7 o'clock, and that is at Hebron United Methodist Church, as we will uh, observe Good Friday with Pastor Pete. It is Pastor Pete's last Good Friday. He's retiring in June. And so I encourage all of you who can, do not come in the afternoon to try to make it to Hebron in the evening. Then on Easter morning, we will have our traditional 11 a.m. Easter service here. And um, I think you will find it to be a very, very meaningful Holy Week and a very meaningful Easter. So, that being said, as we walked in the door today, we carried with us all of those things in our life that, that worry us, that burden us, that cause us to, to have anxiety and angst and fear. But we walked in here knowing one thing, we have the peace of Christ with us. And now let us exchange with one another as we meet and greet each other that peace of Christ. Ready? 
Take up the offering, please. Time to give back to God. I'm so Mark that down, would you, Mark? To him? Yeah. Okay, so we're not going on the road just yet. So I'm sorry. Savior, I come. Bring me to my knees, 
Lord, I lay me down. Rid me of myself. I belong to you. Little children? Little children time? No? Prayer? too many, right? Yeah. With the sirens going, and there'd always be floats, and the bands, and people marching, and all kinds of things going on, you know? And then, of course, they'd always be throwing candy. That was always what I liked, is getting some candy, you know? But on Palm Sunday, when Jesus came into into town, into the city. It wasn't like a parade like we think of. He was the only one coming in, and he was riding on a donkey. And there, was, there were no fire trucks. There was not a lot of noise makers and stuff like that that was going on. But yet the crowds were cheering for him, and they were singing Hosanna. They were singing praises to him. And that's sort of like how, how we think of as a parade. Nowadays, we use our noisemakers and everything, but they made, they made their noise just by lifting their voices up to, to him and praising him. And this next week, we're going to have um, Holy Week. And at that time, it was going to be from praising him and then what all everything he's gone through this next week. So we want to keep that in mind, too, that we praise him and we thank him, and we thank God for sending him to us, because through him this next week, we will have eternal life. And that in itself is going to be a big parade and a celebration when we all get to heaven, isn't it? I think so, too. Shall we say a prayer? Heavenly Father, please be with us this week as we reflect back on what Jesus has done for us. Thank you, God, for sending him to us. And thank you for always being with us and keeping us safely in his loving care. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. One more two. No, we're being hacked by the Lutherans. That's, that's the only way I can explain this, you know. Thank you, Barb. That was wonderful. Um, we do the offertory prayer, and when the offering comes up, we do, it, we do it silently now. So I apologize for that. I do apologize. But we now enter into a time... Well, we're getting quite a bit of feedback here, Mike. Too close to the mic. We okay? What?
Is this on or? It's on, okay. All right. Well, for my uh, first number today. Uh, <laughs> no, well, I thank you all for being here today, and I apologize for the feedback. We'll try to figure this out, see what's going on, but nonetheless, we are gathered to talk about, talk about God's grace in our life today, and during this time of prayer, God's grace becomes very, very significant. Very significant because it helps us understand how we can walk through those things in life that, that we encounter. We can only do that because of God's grace. We can only do that because God's grace is given to us as a free gift. Unmerited, undeserved, but a gift. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thought. Now today, as is our practice, uh, Linda has our prayer list. And at the end of the service, our prayer team, our prayer warriors will gather down here and pray for every individual by name and by need. And we ask you to hold in a very special way this week certain individuals in, in your prayers in a very, very special way. We do want to continue to pray for the family of Bob McCartney. Uh, who passed away. We celebrated his life last week. Just a wonderful family. I was truly blessed to, to be with them. We want to continue our prayers for Cecil Hempenius, who's with us today. Good to see you, Cecil. And, and Ruth and Art, so good to see you. Very, very nice. And also Barb and Paul DePaulo, we want to keep them in our prayers. Uh, uh, Barb is now in rehab, and we want to continue to pray for God's restoring love and healing presence in their life. So what I'm going to ask us to do now is go into a time of silent prayer, a time when we are simply going to center ourselves in the experience of God, because you do not experience God with your mind. You experience God with your heart. You experience God with your emotion. You experience God with your soul. And as you center yourself in this time, I want you to think of this paraphrase of a Bible verse that to me talks about grace. He emptied himself and took the form of a slave. And in his poverty, we were made rich. Think about that and let God speak to you how those words, what they mean in your life. Let us pray. Living God of hope and of grace, God of truth, God of healing, God of power, we lift up to you today in a very special way the family of Robert McCartney. As they continue to walk the journey of grief, restore them, comfort them with the legacy of a life lived well, and may they be nurtured by the promise that is Easter dawn. We pray for Paul and Barb, that your healing presence will surround them this day and every day. May your restorative love, may your spirit dwelling with them grant the fullness of health, the fullness of joy. We pray for Ruth and Art that as they gather today that they may know that they are nurtured by your love, sustained by the love of this community. We pray for Cecil. We pray that you will continue to grant him strength beyond his own capacity and hope not born of circumstance. And may he be guided by your wisdom. And we pray for Betty as well. And may your peace abide with both of them. We pray for those things that we hold in the depths of our soul, those individuals who suffer that we know, those individuals who fear, those individuals who are trapped by the burden of sin and guilt, we pray that you will open our hearts to how we may serve them. We pray that you will cause us to know 
that prayers are not merely spoken, but our actions, our calls to action. We pray that you will strengthen us as the body of your Son, so that his presence may be known through the power of your Spirit and the work of this community of faith to all people everywhere. We pray this in the name of your Son, our Lord, our Redeemer. Amen. And now I would ask that we take all of the prayers we've just lifted, those in the silence of our hearts and minds, those that we, we speak, those that we hold in our mind alone. We put them all together in the perfect prayer that our Lord and Savior gave us. So let's join hands as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Now listen to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 28 through 40. After saying these things, Jesus headed straight up to Jerusalem. When he got near Bethphage and Bethany at the mountains called Olives, he set off two of the disciples with instructions. Go to the village across from you. As soon as you enter, you'll find a coat tethered, one that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says anything, asks, what are you doing? Say, his master needs me. The two left and found it just as he said. As they were untying the coat, its owners said, what are you doing untying the coat? They said, his master needs him. They brought the colt to Jesus. Then throwing their coats on its back, they helped Jesus get on. As he rode, the people gave him a grand welcome, throwing their coats on the street. Right at the crest where Mount Olives begins its descent, the whole crowd of disciples burst into enthusiastic praise over all the mighty works they had witnessed. Blessed is he who comes, the king in God's name. All's well in heaven, glory in the high places. Some Pharisees from the crowd told him, Teacher, get your disciples under control. But he said, If they kept quiet, the stones would do it for them, shouting praise. This is the gospel of the Lord for the people of the Lord. All right, we'll see if this works just a little better. I feel like I should go into my act now all of a sudden. <laughs> no, seriously, we'll, uh, we'll figure out our feedback issue. But did you ever ask yourself how this palm became a cross? Think about that for a minute. We talk about this palm, and this year I want to thank Linda. These are really nice palms. These are actual palm branches. They're very kind of palm branches that people would have laid along the pathway in front of Jesus. But then you wonder, what does it really mean? How does this palm end up being a cross? And how does a cross end up being an empty tomb? And how does an empty tomb being part of our salvation? And that's something we never really talk about on Palm Sunday. We run around, we wave the palms, we take them home, and uh, now at least this year, we don't have to try to figure out how to make them into crosses, right? We take them home, then next year we will burn them for Ash Wednesday. But what does that really, really mean? How does this simple palm branch become a cross and become our salvation? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today, because we're not just going to talk about Jesus coming into Jerusalem. We're not going to talk about how a crowd on Palm Sunday hails him as the new son of David, the new king, the one who's going to liberate the new Exodus, the new Passover. And then, just a few days later, the same people shout, crucify him, crucify him. Well, the very message of the entire Passion is told on Palm Sunday. The very message of the entire mission of Christ in this world is told on Palm Sunday, is told in a parade, is told, as, as Barb said in our children's message, is told about a person riding in to the holy city, riding into what he knew would be his own arrest, suffering, and death. So let's take a look at that text that, that um, Jane just read. Something very interesting happens in that text. First of all, Jesus identifies himself as master, in some translations as Lord. Jesus rarely does that. But now he is acknowledging he is the son of God. And he's riding a colt, which is really a young, young donkey. But it is an unblemished animal. 
Why was that significant? That was significant because the only animals worthy of sacrifice were those who were unblemished, those who were without bark or scar or defect. Jesus was riding an animal that would have been worthy of a sacrifice under the system in those days. And he goes into Jerusalem. He goes to the temple, the holy place of God, where God believed that God resided. The Israelites believed God resided in the temple. No place was holier in all the land. But he doesn't offer a sacrifice. It would have been normal in those days for a person arriving at the temple to offer a sacrifice. But no, he goes to Bethany. Why is that significant? It's significant because what happened at Bethany? Jesus stood in front of a tomb and said, roll that stone away. Lazarus, come out. Lazarus, come out of that tomb. Prefiguring what was going to happen on Easter Sunday morning. But what does this all mean? It comes down to a word we use all the time in church, the word grace. Oh, we hear about it in Scripture all the time. We read in Romans, grace is a free gift. Ephesians, grace is a free gift. In the Psalm, in Psalm 51, and in Paul's letter to the church at Rome, we have, we were born in sin. We needed a Savior. We needed God's grace. And what does that really mean to us today, though? Well, it just so happens I have a present here. And let's see, I need a volunteer from the congregation. Missy, how about you? <laughs> you know, her hand shot up so quickly. And that's really what I enjoy, you know, when people engage, get engaged in the service. Now, Missy, I'm going to ask you a very basic question, okay? Um, and you can make something up if you would like. After all, I do that many Sundays. All right. Um, what did you give up for Lent? Well, now that goes the whole routine. All right, I'm going to need I'm going to need another volunteer. From the guy. No, stay up here. Stay up here. All right. All right. We're going to assume you gave up something. All right. You gave up coffee. I don't think you drink coffee in the first place. Okay. All right. All right. Um, Missy's not being real cooperative this morning, but nonetheless, this explains. This is a great example of God's grace. All right. Even with a non-cooperative, you know, non uncooperative member of the congregation. No, it wasn't. No. No, this was not planned. No, no. As they say in a lounge act, have we talked before the show? No, of course not. No. <laughs> Seriously, I have in this wrapped present whatever it is you gave up for Lent. All right? Now, I am going to give this to you, not as a loan, Okay? Not as something you have to return to me. And here's the good part. You really don't have to do anything to deserve it. All you had to do is walk up here and take my present. Here you are. Now, just like a couple weeks ago, I had phony money. This is actually a phony present. But the image is very significant. This is how God's grace works in your life. This is how God's grace works. We don't deserve God's grace. That's clear in Scripture. But now what do you have to do with that now that you've received it? Do you just hang on to it for yourself? You'll give it to others. Very good. Very good. That's the beauty of grace. So first of all, and you can take your seat again. Thank you. Very good job. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you. Excellent work. Thank you very much. And I apologize for calling on you with that. We'll talk. We'll talk. I know. I know. I know. We'll talk. The answer, though, that, that we're trying to demonstrate here is there are four wonderful things about grace that we need to know. Grace is simply, number one, it is a gift. God's love, God's mercy is because of God's grace. It is a gift, a gift that you are given without condition. And that may surprise you because sometimes we think, oh, I've got to be good to get grace. Oh, I've got to do this to get grace. No, no. 
Jesus came for sinners, not saints. Jesus came for those who are broken, those who are tired, those who are hurting, those who are suffering, those who are alone, those who are addicted, those who are troubled in any way. Jesus came for them. Jesus came for them, and that is grace. It is a gift. Nothing short of a wonderful gift. For two, when the giver gives it, the giver gives up something. God gives grace. You may say, God gives up something? Remember what I said when we were having our, our, our silent prayer? He emptied himself and took the form of a slave, and in his poverty we were made rich. He emptied himself and took the form of a slave, and in his poverty we were made rich. And grace also, as Missy said, is to be given away. We don't just get God's grace. It's not about us. Grace is to be given away. So that's how this palm branch became a cross, became a tomb, became our salvation. When God's grace touches your life, it is to be given away. To carry God's grace to everyone you meet, to carry God's grace to everyone you encounter, to carry God's grace in what you are really doing when you're carrying God's grace, you are helping people experience Jesus who lives today, who is victorious today. So what does grace really have to do with that journey to Jerusalem? It has everything to do with that journey to Jerusalem. Because if it had not been for God's grace, Jesus could have taken a very different route. But he walked right into the very face of Roman evil. He walked right into the Pharisees, the scribes. He walked right into those who would ultimately cause him to die. That is the message of grace. We only receive it. We only receive it as a free gift. And we only can give it as a free gift to another. That is the essence of faith. Grace precedes faith even in our life. For without grace, we would have no faith. Without faith, we would have no hope. Without hope, we would have no salvation. Without salvation, we would not know God. And so as we prepare to enter this week we call holy, let us think and let us reflect on what grace really means. We say the word all the time. I've heard it since I was a little kid. We say the word all the time. But what does it really mean? It means God loved you so much, he sent his only son so that you would have eternal life. That is the message told in Palm Sunday. That is the message of grace. That is the entire message of the gospel. That is the entire message of God's love for God's people. And I'm going to ask you as we close today to just repeat after me these simple words. Dear Lord, I am richer because of your poverty. I am stronger because of your suffering. I have hope because of your passion. I am surrounded by your grace. I am surrounded by your love. I rest in your promises. My heart rejoices. I pledge to carry your grace in every word I speak, in every action I take, in every journey I make. In your son's blessed name, amen.
if this song, if you feel God moving in you and you want to stand up, whether you're singing or not, feel free to stand up. God's your light in the darkness, especially this week. Celebrate that fact. Walk in that light. 
walk in that joy. Let us go in peace, for we have, through grace, a God who wants our fellowship, a God who reconciles us, and a God who grants us mercy. keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Amen. Have a blessed week.